Hey, what's going on everybody? Joe Menza here. We're going to do another watercolor painting. I hope you liked the little clip in the intro. You know, that's a uh, farmhouse from the uh, late 1800s that happens to be near my house at the Forest Preserve uh, has uh, revamped and made into a little sort of a tourist area I didn't even know was there until I happened upon it. So that's the uh, going to be the inspiration for this particular painting. I'm not a big building painter, but I do want to get better at it, and maybe you do too. So let's see what we can do with this. We're going to do, we're going to, it doesn't have to be exact, we're not going off any particular photo, but we're going to kind of use it as the inspiration for the painting we're doing. I'm doing my usual three coats here. Start off with the sky, some raw sienna, I'm not going to make the sky real super elaborate here. Some raw sienna down in the bottom is going to be where some grassy areas are. <clears throat> so let's just give it a little light coating just for that lubricant. A little more in the sky here. And let's wash the brush. Go into a little ultramarine and some Payne's Gray. And we'll get some, some blue skies going here. Hopefully nothing that looks like it's overtly dramatic. I do like to have some lighting going on in there. Just to catch your eye, the little lit areas like I normally do. This is what drew me into watercolor painting to begin with, with having these just little variations in the color and when the water dries and how it looks. So get a little bit of green, a little bit of yellow on the brush, a little blue, a little green. There's going to be some grass coming in this area. We'll make a little path. There really isn't one, but again, we're just using this sort of for our inspiration. So there we have the basis, the background for our painting. Let's go ahead and do a little quick dry. This is the house at the Clow Farm. It was built in the 18, late 1800s. The Clow Farm. All right, so we're back. We've done our little quick dry and we've got the basis for our painting. The next thing we're gonna lay in is we're gonna lay in some background trees. That one tree from the beginning um, that had that sort of unique uh, trunk to it. So we're gonna mix a little yellow with some ultramarine. And we're just gonna lay in some, this is gonna be some of the makings for the tree back here. There's gonna be that one tree here. And so we'll leave a little bit of a space for that guy so that he can shine through the whole thing. Now we're gonna put, I'm gonna put some green over here because what I wanna do is I wanna lift out there was really no trees in this area, but I want to lift out. I want to I want to lift that out. So I'm leaving. I, I'm going to lift out where the house is going to be, rather than just paint the house. Just a little bit of a trick to to lift out instead of just painting the house in right on top raw. I'm doing some layers here with a little Payne's gray, where this foliage would be, just to create some layers. Do some here. Get some, some dark foliage going in here. So we have the basis for our where our where our house is going to go. And we'll put in some more greens here. Again, we're gonna have a little bit of a little bit of a trail going right there, a little little bit of a, a path up to the house. So let's lay in where some more green grasses are going to go. Get some more yellow on the brush and now, invariably, where you have grass, there's almost always a little bit of brown mixed in, just in some areas. There's, the grass isn't always, like right there, uh, the grass isn't always perfect. There's always a little brown patches and things, just to make it look a little bit more natural. Take a little bit of burnt sienna on the end of the brush, and we'll just make it nice and weak so that we can... This is going to be our, our path here leading up to the place. 
leave a little bit of white showing through just to just to catch your eye. All right, so there we have our path. Path goes a little bit. Let's have it go in a little bit, in a little bit to where the house is going to be. You got to sort of imagine this in your mind. Now while that's drying, let's make up some trunk. Uh, let's make up some trunk color. A little bit of blue, a little bit of brown, and we're just going to go right here. Add that sort of weird trunk to it. And then it sort of had, let's use uh, let's use the number three rigger to make these weird branches coming out, which it was like kind of, they, they kind of came out like sideways. Like that. They just kind of came out sideways like that. I think that's pretty good. We'll go back and we'll get some some green on the brush again for the for the top layer of the of the tree. We're just kind of because that's how it was. It was the whole thing wasn't uh, didn't have branches, but it it just was kind of an unusual tree. Kind of caught my eye a little bit there. And then that's pretty much it. It has that that unique effect to it. Okay, so we'll let while that's drying, uh, it looks like we picked up a little hair here. Usually I don't bother with them, but if they're right in the main area, I like to get them out. <clears throat> and right down here where this tree is touching the ground, I'm just gonna put a little, just a little something there. So there's that tree there. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start, and this is this is where a little more detail comes in. Don't want to be too caught up in details, but we're going to need we're going to need some paper towel, paper towel, and a flat brush, and we're going to lift out where the structures are. So we have this one to the left here, sort of a three-dimensional, we'll take and uh, we'll sort of take and shape this out, come straight down. And there we have the basis for that old farmhouse, with the rough structure, take and lift that out. And there's the front of it. And we'll take and this will be this side, give it that three-dimensional look. And then finally the roof coming down. Take and lift that out. And so as you can see, hopefully you can see that we've got the wet brush that we've sort of lifted the paint out of. So we've got that. Okay, then the next thing we're going to do, I'm just going to stretch the paper a little bit here. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take and the other couple of buildings that were there. We've got, uh, now this, this house here, the side of it comes out too. So we're just going to lift out a little bit of that and a little bit of the roof coming down. So there's that. Wash that off. You can do as many times as you feel you need to to really get the dimensions of it. Okay, and the next thing is the barn. You know, it's one of the biggest barns I read that they've erected in the area. So coming down, same thing as before, lifting all the way down. And we've got look at we've got the basis for that that big barn structure back there, and then finally there's was this old house that was back here. I think that was like a guest house or storage house, something like that. That's it's a unique house though, where the roof almost came down to the ground. 
try to capture that in there. So there's our buildings that we have laid out. So the first thing that we're going to do is this, uh, <clears throat> this one off to the right looks like it had sort of a brown, sort of a brownish roof to it, a little gray, and so we'll. All right, so there's part of the roof there. We're going to come back and we're going to do just that little section right there. And that's our roof. And now we're going to look into this side here with this roof coming down. And we have the layouts for our roof for our old 1860s limestone building. So the next... All right, so there's part of the roof there. We're going to come back and we're going to do just that little section right there and that's our roof and now we're going to look into this side here with this roof coming down and we have the layouts for our roof for our old 1860s limestone building. Coming down. Maybe a little more redder. And then there's our barn. And then last but not least, we have the house, which is pretty white looking. We'll give it a little bit of a we'll give it a little bit of a brown roof coming down. And let me reference the photo one more time. So that one's gonna be behind a little bit behind the tree. It's got a little bit of a stack on it. It's got some windows on it. This is where it gets a little more tedious when you have some of these details coming out. Now the barn has doesn't have to be exact, but it has some big doors on it. Coming across there, and then this house here has what we want to do is we kind of want to get that limestone effect. Just take a little bit of maybe a little yellow, a little raw sienna, and then just kind of drag it down just to give it some color. On the bright side and then come back and hit some of the windows doors coming in and there we go we have our little uh, our 1800s century barn we don't need to do any more with that. And we'll mix up a little bit more green with the hake brush. Come back and just add to around the structure itself. And there was a tree here. So we'll put, a, put the makings of a tree in here. And we'll have a branch coming down. Take the uh, number three rigger brush. Some bark color on it. And we'll bring it up just right here. And there we have that tree that was there. Come back and make up some more green.
and there we have our 1900 or 1863 farmland. And last but not least, we'll take and we'll put have some visitors coming up. Walking up to the place. Little dog. Coming for a visit. shadow so they look realistic. Put little shadows underneath the, these trees. Maybe flick in a couple little just some random dirt on the side of the road. And then lastly, we'll add, <clears throat> get some greens going here. Lastly, we'll just add a little accents to where the road catches the edge, just to get a little, put some green, just to get an accent of the road going there. Put in a few little things in the foreground for just, just some interest. And then last but not least, what I usually do take my pen, a few little birds flying overhead. And we'll give it a sign. Sign it over here. And there we have it. There's our 1800s preserved farmhouse. I'll uh, show some close-ups shortly. But that's it. It's easy as that. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, comment, etc.